Well, we're participating in Cobra Gold, which is here in Karat, Thailand, among other places uh, within the kingdom. And uh, Cobra Gold, you know, the, we're just a small part of a larger uh, training event. Uh, it is a uh, joint theater security cooperation exercise with all components, maritime, land, uh, air, we're doing the air portion, but it's also multinational. So we're working with the Royal Thai Air Force, at least uh, this expeditionary group is, uh, while uh, the other players in Cobra Gold are working with uh, counterparts in both uh, Army and Navy. Okay. Sure, the 13th Air Expeditionary Group is comprised of 282 airmen. So I've got maintainers, I've got pilots, and support personnel, and three different types of aircraft. The A-10, the F-16, and about uh, a quarter mile to my south uh, and east is the uh, C-130 squadron, the airlift squadron. So we got a couple of those as well. Uh, the fighters behind me, uh, we're participating in large force uh, employment where we uh, fly about uh, two goes a day. A-10's flying six sorties the, uh, uh, per go. The uh, F-16's flying four and the C-130's flying four as well. Uh, where we go into the airspace up north. It's bilateral, so the Royal Thai Air Force is uh, up there with us. And uh, we're pretty much doing all the missions that our aircraft are designed for. So we're either dropping bombs, shooting missiles, or dropping bundles out of the 130. Now, some of that is simulated. Uh, we do have live fire uh, exercises where we're dropping um, uh, what we would call general purpose bombs. I, ca I call them dumb bombs, the old school uh, gravity weapons. Uh, and that's really just for our training. Uh, but the uh, bulk of the training, when we work the large force employment, involves uh, a full team of uh, U.S. and uh, Royal Thai Air Force uh, aircraft. Well, first of all, their professionalism is outstanding. I think we share the same uh, tactical and operational values when we're airborne. Uh, from mission planning, briefing, executing, and debriefing. Uh, they're very capable. They're flying the same aircraft we are, uh, F-16s. Um, their tactics, techniques, and procedures are very similar to ours. Um, there are nuances, however, but that's why we're out here, so that we can uh, understand how to work uh, together, fly together. Um, in military parlance, that would be interoperability. Uh, they are exceptional. Cobra Gold is um, in its 39th year. Uh, we've been doing this for a long time. It is a, as I said before, it's a theater security cooperation exercise. In a grand scheme of things, what's important is that uh, the Kingdom of Thailand is one of our uh, greatest allies in this region. And uh, that's a long-standing commitment, and Cobra Gold shows U.S. commitment to that partnership. Uh, and we also have to show uh, in the Indo-Pacific region, uh, our allies and partners, uh, that we are committed to a continual presence here. That continual presence um, in the long run will ensure that we can both uh, work together, um, practice uh, the art of aerial combat together, but hopefully to deter, deter any kind of aggression. It's important for the U.S. Air Force and the Royal Thai Air Force to be able to operate uh, in conjunction with each other. The last thing we want to do is to engage in, in any kind of um, hostilities with a partner that we have no idea uh, about their culture. We have no idea about how they fly their aircraft. Uh, we don't know their inner workings and they don't know ours. Um, warfare is not a pickup game. And when we train with the Royal Thai Air Force, uh, we both benefit in, uh, as I said before, interoperability, uh, shared tactics, techniques, and procedures, and uh, the, abil the ability to push when we need to push together uh, with the same objectives in mind. I would say that uh, no matter where I am in Thailand, there is, there is somebody eager to help me with either the language barrier or to show us a good restaurant or to point us in the right direction for something to see, whether it's uh, a, um, a Buddhist temple or just taking a boat ride in the rivers of Bangkok uh, or a you know, nice restaurant. Yeah, this is something that uh, I thought would be good for morale for the, uh, the unit. Um, well, first of all, these, these uh, boonie hats uh, I've seen through uh, history uh, with uh, flyers in the Vietnam War. 
uh, in particular flyers who uh, established this base in Karat and flew the F-105. Um, those guys uh, flew missions day in and day out through insurmountable odds against the most heavily defended areas of the time, surface air missiles, heavy guns, uh, Route Pack 5 and 6 over Hanoi. Um, one in five of those F-105s built that was sent to uh, Vietnam uh, was shot down. Uh, a lot of pilots were killed. These guys had to fly 100 missions, 100 missions so they can rotate home. They lived their life by that count because it was so dangerous um, with uh, very restrictive rules of engagement, things that didn't make much sense, uh, and yet they did it every single day. It took about six months, and this boonie hat uh, that we're wearing, uh, I, I think they called it the 100-hour hat. Uh, they would put tick marks on the brim to signify uh, their 100 missions. Most of my pilots here have been in a combat. Uh, I've deployed many times as well. But we haven't seen the likes of the combat that those pilots have flown. Uh, the F-105 was a magnificent piece of machinery and the pilots who flew them were exceptional airmen. Uh, they just uh, had some uh, very difficult experiences flying in that war. And so we're paying homage to those guys. Uh, they flew out of Karat, they flew out of Takli. The uh, 36 Fighter Squadron, uh, the F-16s behind me, um, under my command, uh, back in those days were the 36 Tactical Fighter Squadron. Uh, they were either the first, or if not the first, uh, F-105 squadron to stand up uh, operations in Karat. And uh, they also were uh, the first to uh, fly what we would call suppression me of enemy air defenses. Uh, the SEED mission. The Navy called it Iron Hand. The Air Force adopted that during the Vietnam War. Uh, and they would troll for SAMs so that uh, they could escort the strike package into the target area. Pretty much dueling cannons against something to, something to shoot them down. Uh, that's a pretty tough mission and they did it. Uh, they had to do 100 and uh, from the history a lot of those guys didn't make it back. So once again we we're paying homage to them. I'm not sure we deserve to wear these but I will tell you that uh, my pilots and the maintainers are aware of that history. I made sure they were. This is hallowed ground, and uh, they know why we were wearing these, these boonie caps. Well, I would suspect that the ramp behind me, to include the uh, concrete to my left and right, uh, was littered with F-105s. Um, at the height of the 388th Tactical Fighter Wing, there were four squadrons. I can't remember their names, but uh, we had four squadrons of uh, F-105s here, and I suspect that they were right behind me. Uh, their alert uh, revetments are probably the ones to my left. Uh, just imagine walking down this ramp and instead of seeing F-16s and A-10s, just a row of camouflage, bomb-landed F-105s uh, with hundreds of crew chiefs working such a complicated aircraft for the 1960s. Uh, of another note, uh, the crew chiefs here have uh, delivered 100% of the aircraft for each of our missions. Uh, I would say that uh, uh, capability rate was the same in Vietnam, and so my hat's off to those crew chiefs. I have seen pictures of uh, crew chiefs lining the ramp, uh, excited, watching their uh, aircraft take off, uh, and then forlorn when the pilot didn't come back. That is a surreal moment that uh, none of my airmen have experienced, nor have I. Um, once again, we pay homage to that. Uh, that was a tough war.